It is one of my favorite filters. I'm going to start out with this particular filter here, and then we're going to go on to another favorite filter on a different video, the Precision Detail Filter, because sometimes there's a lot of confusion. Uh, these filters are kind of similar in a way, but they're really not. There's a lot of differences, so I wanted to do a deep dive into each filter, but today we're tackling the Precision Contrast Filter. So let's get into this thing. Without any further ado, let's get started. Let's start off by examining, you know, what actually is precision contrast. Now, I got this information right from the uh, manual that comes with uh, Topaz Studio 2. So these are actually Topaz's words here. So precision contrast amplifies the smallest details and selectively increases contrast without introducing artifacts or halo effects. So that's pretty interesting stuff right there. Contrast tools are always a balancing act. Correcting for highlights often leaves shadows too dark with lost details, and correcting for shadows often leave highlights stark and blown out. And we've all seen this with just your standard uh, contrast adjustments. Now here's where it gets really good. Precision Contrast has unique selective detail technology that allows you to have the best of both worlds. The precision contrast adjustment makes adjusting contrast easy. Specifically tailor image adjustments by correcting micro, small, medium, and high contrast levels independently. Create contrast exactly where you want it. Now we're going to be looking at the precision contrast filter and we're going to be pulling the sliders around and we're going to see exactly what it does for us. Here's a good question. When should I use Precision Contrast? Now remember, this is from the online Topaz user's manual uh, for Topaz Studio 2. Precision Contrast helps to create beautiful and striking images that still look completely realistic. Flat photographs that lack contrast and depth are magically transformed with the Topaz Studio Precision Contrast Adjustment. What I just read is the main function of the uh, precision contrast filter, but this next section I'm going to read is uh, specifically talking about how it deals with color in small areas. Selectively change the color saturation of small details in the image without changing the color contrast in large details. You now have the ability to add fun blasts of color without oversaturation of the entire image. And I'll show you this in action. You'll see what this actually does for you. This is a super uh, fantastic filter in my humble opinion. And now we're in a Topaz Studio 2. So let's get a look and see what we're doing here. So let's come up here to add filter and let's find the precision contrast filter. But note, right under the precision contrast filter is the precision detail filter. These are two of my favorite filters inside here. Today it's a deep dive into the precision contrast, but we will do another tutorial where we're looking at the precision detail and we'll do a deep dive into that but let's really explore this uh, precision contrast today so let's go ahead and open this filter up and inside here we're going to look at this first section under contrast now you'll notice we have uh, sections here contrast lighting and color we're going to start out with contrast now we have micro low medium and high so micro think of it as very small minute areas of contrast like little tiny lines green and things like that and then we incrementally move up into lower areas of contrast medium areas of contrast and very high areas of contrast but let's examine the micro first so let's take the micro slider and let's start to move it to the right and let's take it the whole way to the right so you can see it can you see all that like the grit and the grain and little fine lines and things like that get really like kind of sharp and you know sharpening is nothing more than increasing contrast along edges okay so we can see that now let's let me show you here's a before and here's the after now let me zoom in a little bit and here's a before and here's an after but you can you see all that detail comes up now i have that jack the whole way to the right and of course with the slider you can move it anywhere you want but you can also move it to the left so don't think of uh, the precision, co precision contrast filter of just adding contrast. Sometimes you want to remove contrast for specific reasons. For me, a lot of times it's artistic reasons. Or I want to make something very dreamy looking. So I can take that micro and drag it the whole way to the left and get rid of a lot of the, um, 
the uh, gritty details and things, they can kind of drop away when I move that to the left. So that's really cool. So to reset this, all we have to do is double click on the word micro. Let me zoom in a little bit. And now let's examine the low contrast. So remember, inc incrementally, this is stepping up. So now we're looking at little larger areas of contrast. Very low, but larger than micro. So let's move it to the right. Can you see that? See all that detail pop? Look, here's the before and here's the after. And remember, you can also uh, move it to the left. But that's dealing with low areas of contrast. Sometimes I say low areas of detail, but I mean low areas of contrast. Okay, now let's examine medium. So if we take the medium, we're looking at a little larger size of contrast here, medium sizes. And you can see that. And basically what contrast is doing, lighter areas are getting lighter and darker areas are getting darker. And that's what gives you contrast when you uh, broaden the area of light to dark. You know, it's not as narrow, but it's more, more wider. So blacks get darker and or dark tones get darker and light tones get lighter when you move this to the right. Now, when you move it to the left, the opposite happens. Can you see the dark tones are not as dark anymore? You're removing contrast now from the medium areas of contrast. So that's pretty cool. Let me double click that. And now let's go to high. Now it's looking for very high areas of contrast. So let's move that to the right. And see all those really, those large areas of contrast, it's really making them dark. But it's not affecting the medium, the lower, the micro. So what is, what's really happening, in, happening with this uh, filter is you're getting total and complete control of your contrast. You're the master of contrast here. And now let's move it to the left. And I'll take the whole way to the left and see how we totally, all the darker areas of contrast have gotten lighter and all the lighter areas of contrast have gotten like more actually get darker they become more gray so that's what's really happening there so let's go ahead and double click this and get it set back now let's go ahead and uh, reset this filter see this little circle here just give that a click and that'll reset the filter back to the default settings and let's adjust this like as if we wanted to adjust it for a print or whatever to put it online so let's start out with a micro now Micro will give you kind of a sharpening effect, which is which is really cool. But remember, it is dealing with contrast, and it's dealing with the very uh, micro areas of contrast. So let me go ahead and pull this up somewhere around there, and then I'll work with my low. And usually I'll drag these sliders. You know, sometimes I go the whole way up, and then I'll just work them till I get them to the point where I think it looks really cool. And the only way to know where to stop them is, is what is pleasing to your eye. Because remember, you're the editor. You're the one doing the adjustments. So you're pleasing yourself. And hopefully others that see it will be pleased as well. Sometimes no, but you know, but you're the artist here. So let's work with the medium now. Okay. And I'm going to say maybe somewhere right around in there. And now the high. Let's move it to the right. Okay. So no, I don't like that. And I'm going to say maybe right around there. Then I'm going to, uh, I just do a left click with my mouse on the canvas. It really anywhere in the canvas it'll work. So there's the before and there's the after. So look at that. I've worked with all the areas of contrast and that looks really cool. Okay, we've adjusted contrast. And now let's uh, turn our attention to lighting here, okay? And this is cool. I love the fact that Topaz is, has given us this lighting section inside of this uh, precision contrast filter. It's not necessarily dealing with contrast. I mean, it is in kind of a way because you have shadows and you have midtones and highlights. I mean, if you make your shadows darker and your highlights lighter, I mean, you've effectively increased contrast, correct? So, I mean, yeah. So it is in a in a different way. It deals with contrast. But I like to think of lighting as like a fine-tuning of my image. I like to start out with contrast and work my way down. So I got my contrast set up the way I like it. And now if I feel I need my uh, shadows darker, I'll take my shadow slider and move it to the left. See how I can darken up my shadows if I do that? Or if I think they've gotten too dark in my contrast adjustments, I can open them up and lighten them up a little bit by moving it to the right. Do you see that? Let me double click that and get it back. So I might think, you know what? I want my shadows just a little bit, not much, but just a little bit darker. 
And if my midtones are off, I can move this to the right and lighten up my midtones. Or if I want a more dramatic image, I could take my midtones and move it to the left. See that and go more dramatic. Okay, and it's only dealing with midtones. So we're dealing with all these fine areas of adjustment, like shadows, midtones, and then highlights. If my highlights are too too strong, I or not strong enough, I can move this to the right and make them lighter. Or if I felt they got a little too strong, I can move it to the left and um, I can um, pull them back a little bit. And you also have a histogram here you can click on and. Uh, you know, see if you're blowing out your highlights or blocking up your shadows. Well, my histogram's looking really good there. I'm just going to shut that off. But anyway, you do have that tool there. And then you also have this uh, tool here called Equalization. And this is a cool little tool, and it deals with the overall lighting of the, uh, of the, um, of the image. So, like a low equalization. I don't know if you can really see much change there, but here's medium, and here's high. On this image, I'm not seeing much happen here, but just go through and click these buttons. And you might say, hey, it looks really fantastic on high. Doesn't look as good on low. It looks okay in medium. So, hey, I'm going to choose the high. Okay, so play with those adjustments as well. Just to clear up the equalization buttons a little bit, uh, I'm looking at the Topaz uh, information again from their online user's manual. Equalization. Let's see if we can understand this. The equalization slider allows you to equalize image exposure by predetermined regions. This will result in an image that boasts consistent contrast throughout its composition. Low equalization will use five regions, kind of a smaller area. Medium equalization will use like 10 regions and high equalization will use 20 regions. So I'm thinking like small, medium, and large, low, medium, high. So on low, you'll get less equalization, less even lighting situation where on high, you'll get a more even or balanced out lighting. I think that's the best way I can describe it. But try those different buttons and hopefully it'll make sense to you. But choose the one that your eye likes the best. You can't go wrong. And now we come to the last section of adjustments, and that's color. We have saturation, vibrance, and color contrast. Now remember, we read earlier about color contrast. That's a special, unique slider inside of this uh, precision contrast filter, and it deals with uh, small areas of contrast losing color. I'll go back and show you that uh, the printed information on that so we can... Uh, talk about that just before I adjust that slider. But let's first go with the saturation. You know, it's a simple saturation slider. You move it to the right, you're going to increase overall global saturation. You move it to the left, you're going to decrease saturation until you eventually get rid of it and you got a, a monochrome image. Okay, so let me double click saturation. So if you need more saturation, you can give it a little more saturation. Or if you need less saturation, if your contrast controls gave you too much saturation, because sometimes when you adjust contrast, sometimes you'll get a little bit of an increased saturation, which is sometimes very pleasing. But if it gets too much, you can back it off. Or if you want more, you can move it to the right. So we have that adjustment there. In fact, I just might give this is a really cool little image here. So I'm going to give it some more saturation to the right. The next slider is the Vibrant Slider, and it's a typical Vibrant Slider that you find in any piece of software, and I'm sure you use Vibrance all the time. It just takes weaker colors, and uh, you can cut back on the saturation of weaker colors or increase the saturation of weaker colors, and they typically tend to protect uh, flesh tones. So if I want to bring up some of the weaker color saturation, I can move it to the right. And on this image, see how some of that green area in there pops out? On this image, I think it could use it. This image to me is saying, give me color. So I'm going to give it some saturation, giving you some color. All right. And uh, lastly, we're going to look at the uh, color contrast. Now, before we do, I want to take a look at the Topaz documentation on that before we touch that slider. So let's read the part about the color saturation. Okay. Selectively change the color saturation of small details in the image without changing the color contrast in large details. You now have the ability to add fun blasts of color without oversaturation of the entire image. All right, let's take a look at that. Now let's examine that color contrast slider here. So remember, small areas of detail that may have lost saturation, it's going to bring that saturation back. So let me start to take this color contrast and move it to the 
to the right and watch the image, especially I think in these glasses right here. As I move it to the right, that's a smaller area of detail. See how that, can you see that? That saturation starts to increase right there. Now notice this area right over in here. Let me double click this. If uh, there's not a lot of color right in here, but if I drag this contrast, color contrast all the way to the right, that gets kind of ugly over here and the overall image gets not too nice. So you got to really be careful with this slider. It's super powerful, but you got to really, really be careful. So let's double click color contrast and set it back. And so I'm just going to slightly move or start to move this to the right and be very careful here. As soon as I see my saturation coming back in the lower areas of detail, I'm going to stop it like right there. A very powerful slider, but be very, very careful with it because you can go too far real fast and you will not be happy. But there we go, the precision uh, contrast filter. We took a deep dive on it. We started out with this image and we end up with this image, all with the help of the precision contrast filter. Well, there you have it, the uh, Precision Contrast Filter, one of my very favorite filters. I think I use it on each and every image I ever uh, edit. I love this filter. We're also going to be looking in another video at the Precision Detail Filter, another one of my favorites that I use all the time. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today, and I hope you learned a lot. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it.